I'll start again and um, just to explain quickly how the progress of the digital product passport is being affected in the co-decision process. So co-deciders are the European Parliament and the member states in the European Council. And that process was kicked off on the 30th of March last year by our proposal. I think that many of you are familiar with that proposal. And I'm going to try and explain some of the changes that have been made since then, or proposed since then. The Council has already adopted its, what we call, general approach, which is the agreement between Member States on their position for the negotiations with Parliament. And in the Parliament, it was referred to three committees. INCO, which is the, industry, uh, the Internal Market and Consumer Protection Committee. Uh, ITRA, which is the Industry Research and Energy Committee, and ENVI, which is the Environment, Public Health and Food Safety Committee. The last one of those is in the lead. Um, and after um, the ENVI committee has delivered its opinion on the 15th of June, so in a couple of days' time, um, it will then go to the plenary. So we will have, hopefully, uh, on the 10th of July, the um, agreed position of the Parliament as a whole, and that will enable the Spanish presidency, which starts at the beginning of July, to actually go ahead with what we call trilogues. So during that process, the, the two co institutions will negotiate on the basis of their mandates, and we as the Commission will try to explain and find uh, solutions in a, in a, a spirit of uh, um, <clears throat> of institutional cooperation. Um, so, in terms of timing, that means that hopefully the Spanish presidency will be able to conclude before the end of this year. And as Michele said um, just before the break, hopefully um, that will enable us to get moving on some of the uh, priority delegated acts. Um, as I put a link in the in the chat, uh, we've had a public consultation on. Uh, which um, priorities, which product groups should be considered as priorities. Also, in the meantime, we're getting on with, um, uh, as you can see today, uh, a lot of the background work that needs to be done in such a, uh, a groundbreaking uh, approach as the digital passport. And um, so if we go to the next slide, just, just to explain what we do know best, which is the council general approach, it's public, it's fairly clear. In general, it's very supportive Chris. and very welcoming, which is not a negligible thing Chris. as we're talking about something which will have a major impact on the products we buy and on business. And we've been working with uh, the presidencies and with member states to try and explain the proposal through uh, the discussions between member states. The general approach does include several positions that aren't specifically about the digital product passport, but which will have uh, an impact on, uh, if they are to go forward. So, um, for example, member states or certain member states will push for um, the eco design requirements in the delegated acts to be decided not by delegated acts, but by implementing acts. Um, they do this because uh, this would mean that they were. The member states were consulted um, upstream uh, before uh, the Commission could adopt such uh, an implementing act in what we call the, in, in the jargon, comitology. Um, but um, in the end, the Council has accepted our arguments that in this aggregated acts, um, where appropriate, would be more practical and a more appropriate in this instrument. Um, and as I say, the significance um, will also establish data requirements in respect to different product groups. Um, so the, the digital product passport is uh, particularly affected here. The general approach also um, related to this is proposed the establishment of a specific member state expert group, which would be consulted on the, um, the requirements in the delegated act, including on the digital product passports. Um, and they've also uh, argued that in certain other areas, implementation should be used, 
uh, for example, in relation to establishing work plans for the uh, for eco design. Um, the member states also called for further criteria in establishing um, the prioritization of work plans, and uh, here particularly in relation to the uh, potential effects on European Union resilience and competitiveness. So the next slide, please, Michele. And I gather that you can, you can still hear me well. So the Member States, more specifically in relation to the digital pass product passport, um, decided on their deletion of one paragraph in Article 13. Um, that's the paragraph which allows the Commission to require in delegated acts that customs authorities automatically verify not only the existence and correspondence of identifiers, which is in Article 13.3, but also the consistency of um, the digital product pa passport registry entry with customs declarations um, regarding any additional information that might be included in the registry, um, which could include uh, tariff codes, for example, um, or other information uh, which is available uh, on the customs declaration that would allow for a, a quality control. And that um, automatic verification um, information proposal would mean that it, it had to be done before that product is released um, for free circulation. So in the case of an imported product. We included this provision in Article 13.4 um, as we believe that, that non-compliant products are identified and removed from the market. Um, and as these checks will be automated, so that means without human intervention, uh, we don't believe that this would lead to significant uh, administrative costs or burdens. Of course, um, we have to be ready to improve on the drafting of this article and um, uh, to make sure that any conclusion that is reached in the trilogues is, is uh, practicable. Um, but we also feel very strongly that the principles behind it and the, the intentions behind it need to be kept intact. Um, the Council has also included a requirement, um, in addition to Article 12, for the Commission to set up and maintain a web portal which would allow stakeholders to search for information that's included in product passports. Um, and that this web portal should be designed to guarantee that stakeholders can search for information in linen with their specific access rights. Um, now this, um, this uh, request in the council position or in their general um, approach was the outcome of um, long discussions uh, where the commission had to really explain why we believe that a centralized approach to the digital product passport was not only impracticable, but also pretty much impossible in view of the amount of data that would be need that would need to be inputted every second. So the intention of the member states here is really to make sure that the data generated by the digital product passport um, can be an anonymized, can be consolidated and analyzed. Um, we think that this could be very useful, but we need to, of course, to make sure that it's, uh, um, it's technically possible and done in the most useful way possible and in, in good timelines. Next slide, please, Michele. So when it comes to the Parliament, as I explained, we don't have a an agreed position of the institution yet. But from what is coming out of the committees so far, we can see that there are some common concerns emerging. Um, of course, we can't predict how things will turn out, but uh, you're welcome to hypothesize on uh, whether some of these might result in some common ground with the, the Council um, or on, on some trading, on some rule, room for deals. So from the Internal Market Committee, um, it's actually quite notable that there weren't any amendments um, regarding Article 13 on customs controls, which actually would be in the most direct remit of that committee and in their uh, <clears throat> main zone of influence. There are quite a few attempts to tighten up the protection of intellectual property, including reference to the uh, direct directive on the protection of trade secrets, um, which is also referenced in the Council 
general approach. Um, more specifically, in Article 9, Paragraph 1, the Rapporteur of the Committee um, put in a, a, a proposed amendment related to the end uses shall not be stored or stored in or extrapolated from the digital product passport. And this, I think, uh, might be interesting in view of the dis later discussions on what the council is asking for in terms of a web portal. The Internal Market Committee also called in Article 9 for links to other product databases via what they called a single entry point. Um, and for us, uh, for the Commission, we have concerns about this, not just in terms of what would re be regarded as relevant in terms of other databases, but also and probably principally the technical feasibility of having those links and that, that single entry point. Um, and it's actually unclear what they really mean by a single entry point for economic operators. But nevertheless, we have to consider these um, proposals seriously, uh, particularly as this one was uh, by the, the three biggest groups in the parliament. On Article 8, the committee um, uh, wanted to expand some of the access and dating, up, some of the access and updating rights uh, to various other groups such as refurbishers and, and researchers. Uh, but on the other hand, um, was rather more limiting in terms of which repairers could have access to data and to updating rights, uh, limiting that to professional repairers. Next slide, please, Michele. So the ITRA committee um, also um, has made its wishes known. Um, actually, a lot of these are in areas which aren't really in the direct competence of the, um, the ITRA committee, but uh, this still gives us an important insight into some of the positions that the political groups in the parliament might take in plenary. Um, the Industry Committee reflected rather the um, the Internal Market Committee's position on access and and on the uh, interoperability with other product databases, and again was very keen to protect intellectual property and trade secrets. Uh, but the Industry Committee also went into a bit more detail on Article 10, um, calling for the reinforcement of the responsibilities of third party service providers to ensure the cyber security of data. Um, and it also called for the digital product passport to uh, better reflect the, the market and the product lifetimes of, um, of the product itself. So next slide, please, Michele. When it comes to the Environment Committee, which as I explained is the lead committee in this case, uh, we have to wait until um, the 15th of June to, to know what the result of their vote will be. Um, and it will be interesting to see um, particularly uh, their approach to uh, the rights and responsibilities of online marketplaces. Um, in the Commission proposal, we already covered this um, in Article 29, um, particularly because we were concerned that consumers should have uh, the right to expect the products that they buy online um, and also that the actors involved in the sale of goods online uh, are bound by the same responsibilities. And um, some of the amendments that are tabled in the, uh, the, the draft um, positions of the, of the uh, Envy Committee seek to reinforce those responsibilities. So, for example, requiring online marketplaces to proactively ensure compliance with all products sold by third party sellers on their sites. Now, now we have to see what the compromise text comes up with um, when they vote on that uh, in the committee um, and how much support that will get. We also expect the the Parliament to look at the need for online marketplaces to have access to digital copies of the data carriers in order to be able to make that kind of information available. Um, and this was already raised in the Internal Market Committee opinion. Um, so we'll need to consider the concerns of, uh, of such marketplaces so that um, uh, as particularly as they're not actually usually selling um, individually identifiable 
physical products, so sort of on a serialized basis, it will not really be technically possible for them to make a digital product passport available online at the item level um, or even probably at the batch level. So this is something that we have to consider carefully, um, um, particularly as the, the, the parliament looks to be showing a particular interest in that. Slide, please, Michele. So just to I might see this is a bit of prediction um, in the plenary. Um, so when the parliament as an institution um, adopts its view, just looking at some of the discussions and draft amendments in the committee so far, we can expect to see some push towards strengthening the, the intellectual property and privacy arrangements. Um, we can expect some discussion on how long the passport should be available for in relation to the um, the expected lifetime of the product. Uh, we can expect to see probably coming through in the Parliament's um, final opinion some adjustment of the access and updating rights. Um, we can expect to see a uh, call for more clarity in the rights and responsibilities of the online marketplaces um, and also some push towards interoperability with other product databases. Um, and yet we've yet to see what they will, uh, what, what, what their reaction will be to the idea of, a, of an online searchable tool as the, as the council is proposing. Next slide, please, Michele. So for the trilogues, again, this is prediction and um, we, we really can't uh, be too sure about uh, what will be the main issues, but here um, uh, you can see that there are, there are three proposed changes which are perhaps a little bit more significant than the others. The first being this idea that, it, that there should be a web portal. So we certainly need to uh, look at this in, in a lot more detail and, and think how this could be done and make sure that the final result is, is reflecting a sort of practical solution. Um, the deletion of customs checking of the consistency of registry information and the customs declarations, which I, I explained earlier, we think could be problematical. And um, so we have to see again how we can um, ensure that the, the final result is uh, uh, keeping our original intentions intact in, in terms of making sure that it doesn't hamper uh, the effective enforcement of, of um, the regulation. And finally, we need to um, look at how to deal with some of the legitimate concerns really regarding the responsibilities of online marketplaces and to ensure that, that their responsibility to ensure compliance of products, uh, but also remaining very much uh, as far as possible uh, within the bounds of what is realistic um, and making sure that uh, those online marketplaces also have the capacity to be able to earn them in that way. So with that, I'll leave it and look forward to your questions in the chat and also uh, in the Q&A session a bit later on. Thank you.